G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at my very first Marantz component. Always thought I was going to do their tape decks first, but uh, no, apparently I'm doing a combination CD player mini disc deck first from them. So let's get started with this. This comes from Japan. It's one of my latest acquisitions from over there. I thought it would be nice to have at least a half-decent looking one of these to go into my bedroom system so I can listen to music in there on mini-disc, because I do seem to be getting quite into that format. And I thought, well, if I'm getting a mini-disc just for the uh, bedroom stereo, it should probably have a CD player built into it. So uh, that's why I chose this model. Now, before I get started with this and talk about what's wrong with this one, I just wanted to mention real quick that I have studied the service manual on this one and I have decided to go ahead and jack this into the into the full 120 volt power grid here in North America. It's a 100 volt power supply set up in, in this thing. However, I've studied the power supply schematics and I have basically about 85% confidence that it's going to hold up long term at 120 volts just because of the way it's designed. Now, I want to caution you real quick that uh, doing this kind of thing isn't for everybody, and I would strongly suggest that you don't try to do this yourself unless you are absolutely sure that uh, you, like me, are a technician and you've studied the schematics and are absolutely sure it's going to work. So I'm going to plug it in now real quick because we do have to try and uh, see what's wrong with it. All right, it's plugged in. And you'll remember I didn't want to do this with the Bose Via because uh, I had no schematics to verify whether or not the power supply could handle 120 volts. So uh, yeah, I'm continuing to use the Bose Via off the transformer, but uh, this one, this was significantly cheaper to get than a Bose Via was. So I'm not really too concerned about blowing it up or something. So what was the complaint with this? Well. According to the seller, the CD tr or the CD section has some problems. It doesn't read CDs properly. I believe the mini disc section works. So uh, hopefully, all we've got going on here is a, a dirty lens or something like that, or dirty optics, and uh, I can easily get the CD part of this going. So this will be a short video in that case. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. And also, I should mention, like I do with all my uh, mini disc acquisitions from Japan, except for the Bose Via, I didn't do this for that. I bought another great big stack of mini discs, and most of these are brand new. So, uh, yeah, I got lots of new mini discs here to uh, test this guy with today. So that's what's going to happen. All right, let's power up and see what happens. But uh, you know what? Something's weird. Before we get started with the power-up tests, doesn't it seem like this is sitting awfully low to the ground here? In fact, I distinctly remember decorative feet being underneath here. Yeah, see that's where they, they go. Where these two dots are with the screw in the middle, that's where the decorative feet are supposed to go on this. And the screws are here, so uh, the previous owner did this on purpose, possibly to uh, fit it into a smaller rack than it otherwise would fit into. In which case, it would have been nice if he had sent the uh, the feet with this thing, but I guess not. Oh well, that's not a big deal. I can always get rubber feet to go into here instead of the uh, the factory ones. It doesn't have to look that pretty. It looks good enough. Okay, so let's power up and see what happens. Okay, there's definitely something going on in the display there. As you can see, CD no disc. Is there anything in the mini disc section? No. So we'll try the CD first, because that's what's apparently having the problems with this. 
I've got the home theater fired up now, so we'll hear audio if there's audio to be heard. The tray seems to be moving in and out perfectly. I'm going to try a, a press disc first. This is kind of a rare one. I bought this in person on location at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City back in 2010. I believe I got one of their few remaining copies of it, so uh, let's see if it reads this. And it did. So I'm going to try the remote here for the first time. I believe someone's left some Japanese batteries in it, so I don't know if they're any good, but we'll find out shortly. Yeah, no problems there. It read that just fine. So let's try another disc. Something a little harder. Something that could not be read by the Bose Via. I'll get this old CDRW. And we'll see if I can read this. I'm starting to wonder if I got something that's actually perfectly working. And it seems like it did something. It says CD text in the display there. I don't know what that means. It is actually reading this. Not well, but it's reading it. Yeah, I think we do have something to do on this one. It's not doing extremely well here. Let's pull this one out and we'll try one of the MP3 CDs. Or rather, I will try the MP3 RW CD I made for the uh, Bose Via. Very likely this does not have MP3 capability, so this probably won't do anything, so I just want to see. Reading, reading, reading. Uh, one track, 58 minutes. It's not picking up the MP3s. Yeah, she doesn't like that one. So yeah, I'm guessing it's probably going to be an optics issue. Needs the laser lens cleaned. I don't mind if it turns out to be that easy, but let's check out the mini disc here. I'll load my test disc. See what the MD side of her does. It looks like it read it. Well, are you going to play or not? There it goes. It's got a real hot output level, I gotta say. Anyhow, that seems to have worked. So, let me pull the test mini disc out. And I want to get one of the new ones out so I can test recording. Okay, that should do. I gotta figure out how to blank the disc now. Now, how do I get the dubbing stuff to work on this thing? that's far enough. I just need to see if it records, and it looks like it is recording. Or it was recording. It's now writing the table of contents. Okay. Uh, 
Ah, uh, yes, perfectly working. But we gotta get in there and start fiddling with the uh, CD laser lens. All right, inspecting the guts of a Marantz CM6200, and it looks like this is a little off kilter somehow. I don't know what's going on there. Let me power it back up and eject. Huh. Is it supposed to be like that? Okay, what do I got to disconnect in here? Oh, I've got one connector up here. Got the ribbon cable over here. Always get nervous reconnecting those ribbon cables. And we've got audio cable, I think, right down here. Is that it? Nope, there's one more over here. Little tiny three pin connector. So we should be able to get this out now once we take some screws out. Okay, what have we got going on here? How do I gain access to the underneath here without messing with the uh, the laser harness? Good question. We'll just start taking screws out and see where that gets us. Got a bunch of those crappy old... Uh, well, I shouldn't say old. They're probably not that old. But uh, crappy surface mount capacitors there. Don't really see anything too obvious underneath here. We'll just lay this out of the way for now. The laser power adjustment pot is just right down in there. I don't know if you can see it too well. Sort of right there. And you should never touch those. They're preset at the factory for the right laser power. And uh, if you ever get to a point where you do have to adjust that pot, it means the laser's going out anyway. And you're just making it faster. Or making it fail faster, I should say. So it would be nice if I could get the uh, CD section working properly, but uh, it doesn't have to be. Okay, what is the deal with this? Are there any broken parts or what is going on here? If you spot it, let me know in the comments. Because I'm kind of starting to think maybe it's supposed to even be like this. Which doesn't make sense. Why would it be like that? Oh, wait a minute. I think I see what's going on here. There's a pivot right there. And I'm betting there's another one under here. Yes, there is. Okay, I guess it's supposed to be like that that apart for nothing. So I guess I'll put it back together and then we'll run it the way it is and see exactly how this works. All right, let's check it out and see what we got. Power is on. And I missed something. What did I miss? I missed a connector, I think. Connector I missed was sitting right over there. I'll leave that screw out for now. I just want to see what happens.
Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, that's exactly the way it works. It just drops down from one side. Weird. Okay, now it's having trouble with this one. Oh, I think we've got more to do with this. I'm going to take the uh, transport out again, and we're going to check those capacitors underneath, those uh, awful surface mount ones. Dollars to donuts, I bet you that some of them are failing. That can easily cause this issue. Honestly, it would not surprise me if we've got some bad ones here. That have to be changed. I'm kind of worried about the same thing with the Bose Via before you ask. Because it's got them too. We'll have to measure ESR when we get back into that thing. Ah, I can't really read it that well that way. You're going to have to look at it sideways, I guess. All right, 4.7, 6.3 volts. Six ohms. Oh no, that's 47. Let's see, where would that be? Okay, that one's bad. Next one, same deal. 3.3 ohms. Bad. 4.1 ohms, that's the same value, also bad. 3.2, not so good. 47 at 16 volts, what is this one? 2.2, and that's better. Let's see, that would be up here, so yeah, it's kind of marginal. 100 at 10 volts. What do we got here? 1.5. That one strikes me as being good. I think. Let me see if I can find it here. And uh, no. We got to change all these uh, surface mount capacitors out immediately. So I guess I'll do that now. Now it's got me worried about uh, surface mount capacitors in, inside the mini disc section. Should probably have a look at those while we're in here. All right, folks, I managed to find all the capacitors I need for this. I've got uh, five of these here, 47 microfarad at 16 volt capacitors. It's overkill for most of these, but not overkill for this one. And I've got this 100 volt. 16 volt or 100 microfarad 16 volt for this one they're all rubicon so i'm going to do one of these with you on camera and then i'm going to go off camera for the rest of them because i need my uh shots from my phone in order to uh tell exactly what i need to uh put in here so uh i guess we'll do this one here first and i'm going to use the cut it off method because that seems to work best Got to remember, negative towards this doohickey over here. Ooh, fishy smell. That was bad. That was really bad, that capacitor. No good ski. All right, got to prep the new capacitor. Let's see, how am I going to lay this in here? Facing that way would be best, I think. All right, folks, there you go. One CD player fully recapped. Now, uh, 
these two here were the worst of them. They were leaking physically. And in fact, this one was leaking so bad it squirted electrolyte all over the the chip over here and uh, got my cutters absolutely filthy. And by the way, these cutters aren't working for this kind of thing. I'm going to have to get better ones. But uh, I managed. I didn't do any damage. Well, I don't think I did anyway. We're about to find out. I'm going to put this back in the... Uh, in the machine real quick and we'll see what happens. Okay folks, shall we see what's up? Power on. CD no disc. CD will have disc in a second. I'm going to try the, the difficult rewritable first. Even after service, I'm not sure if that's going to work, but uh, we're going to find out. Well, she pulled out seven tracks. I'm going to try to go to track six here. See if it'll do anything. And uh, no, it's not reading that any better. Which I kind of thought might be the case. That that RW just fought with the with everything I tried it in, honestly. <laughs> but I bought this for stamp discs, so let's see how that does. Okay, let's go to track eight on this one. See what happens. Instantly playing. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call that a success. We got the uh, CD part fixed, at least fixed better than it was. Now I gotta do the hard thing and I gotta get into the mini disc section and take a look for bad caps there because I'm not leaving it at this. I have to have the mini disc working. All right folks the MD side of this is going to be bloody awful to deal with. I've got my anti-static band on so I'm a little better prepared than I was in the uh, Bose Via video but uh, this ain't gonna be fun. Let's see, where does my uh, dental pick go? The one that's in my hand now. Can I even get this ribbon cable off? You don't want to tear these things, so I'm quite concerned. There we go, that's off. I gotta pull this little teeny tiny connector apart there. I've got two screws to get rid of, one over here and one over here. I'm already gonna tell you that uh, I do not have the capacitors to replace anything in here because they're going to be very small surface mount. I'm not even sure I'm gonna want to replace them. That's assuming there are some. And yes, there are. There's three of them. The problem with these types of... Uh, assemblies is look at how little space there is in order to accommodate these things. There's just not much at all. 
You know what? I'm kind of starting to think this is a very similar sharp mechanism as to uh, what we found in the Bose Via. Might even be the same. Possibly not. Okay, that one's 100 microfarads at 10 volts, 100 at 10, 220 at 4 volts. Great. Okay, where did I put my ESR meter now? I'm telling you right now, if these test good, I am not replacing them. I do not want to do this anytime soon if I don't have to. All right, let's see what we got here. Thirteen ohms, that one's bad, has to be replaced. Great, 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 great. Two point oh, eh. Point three three. Those two can be considered good and acceptable. This one has to go. Oh no, wait a minute, that's 1.3, the decimal was turned on and I didn't realize it. So those are both 100 at 10 volts. Uh, no, they're marginal. They really should be replaced. The 220 at uh, 4 volts, what was that again? Point three one. Let's see, two twenty at four volts. Oh yeah, that one's good for sure. So we need to replace the two ten or er, ten volt one hundred microfarad caps. I don't know if I even dare try to put re regular electrolytics in here because uh, I don't know if I've got the room. This one. Down in this corner, I think I do have the room. But this other one is way up over here. I'm just checking to see if I've got any room for that one. I'm not feeling optimistic. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, that one is extremely tight. Let me look through my capacitors and we'll see. That one at the very least I can do right now. All right, folks, change of plan. I'm not gonna recap these now. I have to get the appropriate surface mount capacitors, at least for this one. I thought about trying it anyway. I think I could possibly fit it in at this particular angle right here, but uh, it's extremely tight. It could very well not work, so. Uh, I'm just gonna put it back together the way it is now, and I'm gonna, well, first I'll measure these to see exactly what I need to replace them with the next time I do a capacitor order, but uh, yeah, this has to stay as it is for now, because there's no way to do this with the parts I have on hand. Sad to say, but that's the way it goes with some of this uh, surface mount crap. It doesn't always work out the way you want. Okay, these are all 6.1 millimeter diameter. They're all pretty much identical. 220 at 4 volts. I might as well change them all if I'm doing them. 100 microfarads at 10 volts. Two of those, and uh, not exactly sure how thick they are. I'm going to try to estimate here. Gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna say five millimeters. Okay, so 6.1 by five millimeters is what I need the new capacitors to be for this. So yeah, it's unfortunate I can't do anything about this, but uh, very likely I'm gonna have to do something similar with the Bose Via, so I'm gonna wait until the follow-up video of that machine in order to figure out what I need to order for capacitors, and then I'll just order Something for everything, as it were. But I'm going to put this back together and uh, 
we'll make sure it still works after. All right, so let's check her out and see if the mini disc still works. I've only got one screw holding it in just yet, but uh, that's fine. I have mixed feelings about the uh, ribbon cable I had to reinsert, but it looks like it's recognized. Okay, yeah, it's a little slow to read, but it is reading. Those capacitors aren't so far gone yet that they need to be changed immediately, but they do need to be changed. So, uh, yeah, next time we work on the Bose Via, I'll inventory the capacitors in there, see if it needs any, and then we can go from there. Meantime, this can be used the way it is. Everything's working now. At least everything should be working now. Let me try another CD, just real quick. Not the one I was using before, I'll go find another one. Okay, we'll try the Disorderly soundtrack because it's got a lot of uh, stuff that isn't covered under Content ID, which I like. I don't have to worry too much about uh, leaving in just a little too much of any certain track on this, except for the uh, the uh, Bon Jovi track. That one I can't use at all. Let's go for track three. I've used that one before. That's going to be the end of this video, I guess. I'm fairly happy with my uh, device I purchased here. But I knew there was something wrong with it, so uh, that's why I've got that JVC coming in now, too. Oh, Lord, I can't wait to see what that one's going to be like. Not. I can wait. I can possibly wait forever. I'm not that big of a fan of JVC like I used to be. Anyway, that's going to be it for today, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.